And what do we already know about circular motion? We know that if an object is moving in a circle, even if it's moving at constant speed v, is that thing accelerating? Yes. yes, it is, and we call that centripetal acceleration. And which way does it point? Towards, towards the center of the circle. Okay? Centripetal acceleration is towards the center of the circle. We write it with an A sub C. And it's always towards the center of the circle. Okay? Remember, when we think about acceleration, acceleration is delta V over delta T. Delta V can be change in speed or it can be change in direction. It doesn't have to be both, it can be one or the other. And if you have either of those, then you have an acceleration. In this case, even if we're not changing speed, we are changing direction as we go. Because if VI is right there, at some later time, VF would look like that. It certainly has changed direction. All right, so centripetal acceleration becomes V squared over R in magnitude, and it points towards the circle's center. So if we have an acceleration, we have to have a force, right? What do we know about Newton's second? Newton's second says sum of the forces has to be the mass times the acceleration. In this case, there is only one force which is keeping us in the circle. If it was like a car on a road, it would be friction. If it's a ball on a string, it would be tension. If it was a person in orbit, it would be gravity. That is mv squared over r. And the way we write it with a subscript is with an r right there. What we mean by this r is radial force. And the sign convention is positive towards the center. This is a little bit different than you might normally think of a radial uh, variable where positive would be out away from the center. Here we're using positive towards the center. This is, of course, centripetal acceleration. This is the mass, and those two things combined are what we call centripetal force. Okay, let me ask you a question. Okay, you're sitting here on the earth, presumably, even the people at home are probably on the earth, right? Maybe someday we'll have like students on the International Space Station following along with these learning glass lectures. That'd be kind of cool, right? Here you are, you're sitting on the Earth. What forces are acting on you right now? Gravity. Gravity. And what else? Normal force. So let me ask you guys a simple question, and I'm going to ask the people at home too. Does gravity equal the normal force? On you right now, does gravity equal the normal force? 
think about it for a second and discuss it. I'm going to post it to the people at home and let's give them some options. A, yes. B, no. C, don't know. What'd you guys think over here? Would you like A, B, or C? A. A, table two? A, table three? A, back table? A, right here? You, you guys want to go with B? Just to be a little different? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see what people at home thought. Okay, people at home, more or less in agreement with what you guys said, right? They liked A the most, and then they liked B. So let's attack this problem. How do we do this problem right here? Okay, well, let's redraw the picture. First off, are you moving in a circle right now? Yeah, absolutely, right? So we're moving around because the Earth is rotating on its axis. Okay. What forces are acting on the person? What's the first one we always draw? Gravity. MG. What else? Normal force. Okay. Somebody said centripetal force. Centripetal force is not a real force. Okay. These are real forces. The sum of them is equal to the centripetal force. Okay. So centripetal force is really just a description of forces applied to circular motion. Is that it? Is that the only two forces? Mg and normal force? Yes. All right. Let's identify something else here. R the radius of that circle that we are moving in. We've got our picture, we've got our free body diagram, very simple. We go to Newton's second law. Newton's second law in circular motion says the following. The sum of the forces has to be mv squared over r. The sign convention that we just talked about said that towards the circle center is positive, so mg is towards the circle center, n is away from the circle center. And that has to be mv squared over r. And so look what happens. If I solve this for n, what do I get? n is mg minus mv squared over r. So is n equal to mg? No, n is not equal to mg. n is mg minus this other quantity. If you're moving at some v, which we are on the Earth, and we're at some radius, the radius of the Earth, your normal force is not your weight. Okay? n is not equal to mg for this problem. Okay. So that last table that wanted to be different and say B, good thought. Okay, so let's see if we can solve this for you guys right now. Let's make it a little more simple though. Let's say you're standing at the equator. And if you're standing at the equator, you are going around you have some mass, let's give you a mass, how about, I don't know, 70 kilograms, okay? Typical mass of a human. We are at a radius of the radius of the Earth, if we're at the equator. Anybody know what the radius of the Earth is? You guys sitting there with your phones in front of you, people at home? Take a Google search for radius of the Earth. Okay, but we need SI units. Miles aren't really going to help us here. <laughs> what, what is it in meters? Let's see if anybody at home got it. No, not yet? Okay. 6.37 million? 1 million. 1 million? 1 million meters. 
Sorry, a million is not that much. One billion. No, what do you say? One trillion, right? Okay. 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. All right, what else do we need for this calculation? We need V. How do we get V? Anybody know the velocity that you're moving at if you're at the equator? I don't know. What we do know is that you go once around in how long? How long do you go once around if you're standing at the equator? One day, right? 24 hours. So what does this become? It becomes 2 pi times the radius of the Earth divided by t, where t is 24 hours. And so we can punch in some numbers here. 2 pi radius of the Earth we just said was 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. One day is what? It's 24 hours times 3,600 seconds per hour. Somebody punch this into your calculator and tell me what you get. How much? 86,400 Oh, that's for T, right? Yeah. That was for T, okay, I got you. Uh, what'd you say, 463? 463, and it's SI units, so we're in meters per second. Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds right, because we said that we're moving about 1,000 miles per hour. Double that, you get about 1,000 miles per hour. Okay, so let's calculate the normal force now. The normal force, we said, is m times g minus v squared over r, which becomes 70 kilograms times 9.8 minus 463 squared over 6.37 times 10 to the 6. And if you punch that in, what do you guys get? Anybody get a number for this one? Omar, did you get a number? <laughs> you lost your calculator. 683. Sure, why not? I love how you say you lost your calculator and yet you're sitting with a computer right in front of you that has a calculator on it. <laughs> you do Apple spacebar, type in calculator, and it'll pop right up. All right, 683. What are the units? Newtons, right? mg is a force, so this had better be in newtons. What does that mean? 683 newtons. What if you were at the North Pole? What would your normal force be if you're at the North Pole? it would be mg. What is mg? It's 70 kilograms times 9.8. And if you punch that into your calculator, what do you get? 686 newtons. All right, so wait a minute. Are we saying that if you're at the equator, that you weigh less than if you're at the North Pole? Is that what we're saying? 
remember, your weight, your perceived weight, is how hard the ground is pushing up on you. And we just showed that the normal force at the equator is 683 newtons. The normal force at the North Pole is 686 newtons. And this is really what happens. If you're at the North Pole, you are about a half percent heavier than when you're at the equator. Now, you right now are neither at the North Pole or the equator, so you're somewhere in between the two. Okay? But you are certainly experiencing a normal force on you that is not equal to mg. N is not equal to mg. The ground is not pushing up on you with mg because you're moving in a circle. So let's go back to this picture for a second. Here's the Earth. Here you are. And there are forces that are acting on you. Mg is down. The normal force is up. If that normal force was exactly equal to Mg, then you wouldn't be moving in a circle. Something has to have a little bit of an extra force to keep you moving in a circle. And that is gravity being a little bit bigger than the normal force. Let's say we did the following. Let's say we just went back to some basics for a second. If we turned off gravity, what would the normal force become? It would also be zero. And what would happen to you? You would fly away. But what would your trajectory be? It would be a straight line. If those were both zero, you would just fly away in a straight line. Okay. What makes them not zero is mg being a little bit bigger than n, and that's what keeps you moving in this circle.